Hey y'all, welcome back to Therma Comics. This is Ashley here and we talk about everything that is comics, manga, and graphic novel related here on this channel. Thank you so much for being here if you're new here and thank you for coming back if you've already been here. <sighs> y'all, we hit 1,000 subscribers. I'm so happy. Like, this was such a big move for me in terms of, like, creating this channel. I always give props to Brie from Lock Petition because Brie really was the encouragement and the push that I needed to make this happen. And I'm so happy that she helped me envision all of this and gave me the push that I needed to make this channel happen. But we hit 1K. So thank you so much, all of you, for being here and for really just enjoying the content and I don't know just just this is what I'm passionate about and so I always get kind of tongue-tied talking about it because it just means so much to me I'm just glad that you all saw the the passion and energy and the love that I have for these specific forms of literature so today has been a video that I've been saying that I was going to do for a while this is going to be a middle grade graphic novel recommendation video I have been reading a lot more middle grade graphic novels there's so many that come out every single year lots that come out every single year and so many that I have not read but I've read some great titles this year there are some titles that I've read in the past that are not necessarily ones that are 2022 clearly if I read them in the past are not 2022 releases but I kind of mixed up quite a bit I honestly feel like though a good bit of these are more front facing than backlist in terms of how long they've been out because these are the ones that I have the best memory of and are more current and are tackling some things that I think are not saying that things in the past haven't been relevant but these are even more relevant than maybe they were five six years ago in terms of what is contained within the stories so we're gonna go ahead and jump right in I have 10 for today and if you enjoy this video I will consider doing more of these middle grade graphic novel recommendations so just go ahead and jump into it so the first one that I have on here is going to be smaller sister and this was written by Maggie Atkins Willis this was a pleasant surprise for me I was not really sure what I was stepping into I did select this one from my own library and of course I had read reviews about it it focuses on two sisters who are going through a lot of changes they are best of friends they're not that far apart in age and when we start the series or start the book you can see how close they are but of course as the older sister as she begins to grow she comes into her own she begins to change and the relationship has a little bit of a strain and then all of a sudden their parents announce like hey by the way you're going to a new school so there is a huge adjustment that is kind of introduced to the mix of their relationship I will say this has a huge content warning for eating disorders and that is the one of the primary focuses of this book is how an eating disorder impacts not only the person who has it but the family members around them so while the older sister is really struggling with the adjustments of going to a new school she does end up forming an eating disorder which is in the summary it's the author is very clear about stating that that is a part of the narrative so I'm not spoiling it for you just in case you were wondering but it does focus on the fact that she has an eating disorder and she is trying to all also at the same time figure out how to be in this new school and environment and make friends and basically live up to these unrealistic standards that we set forth for young women whenever they are going through puberty and maturing and it puts such a heavy strain on the relationship between her and her sister and you see some things start to happen to the younger sister because of proximity to what is happening to the older sister and it really explores the idea of of impact and the strain and as the older sister is getting assistance and the parents are very much so focused on making sure that she gets into a better place mental health wise and physical health wise and some ways the younger sister is neglected and so we start to see the impact and effects of that and how she attempts to navigate being a new kid at a school no longer having that dynamic in relationship with her sister as well as feeling neglected by her sister and her parents this did the conversation in such a nuanced way that is constructed for middle grade readers in a way that I did not expect. I think that it is something that middle grade readers should be exposed to, but there's a way to kind of handle the content and I think that the creator of this did a very, very great job. I was not 
the biggest fan of the artwork, but I think the storytelling of it was very, very well done. So if you're looking for something that not only looks at sibling dynamics, but also some other difficult topics with a, I wouldn't say happy ending, but with a realistic ending and some realistic goal setting and realistic conversations towards the end of it, I would highly recommend this one. So the next one is one that I think a lot of people have heard about and a lot of people have been reading. It's been making its rounds um, in the reading community, whether that is online or in general community spaces like libraries. And that is Swim Teen by Johnny Christmas. I had been meaning to pick this one up for a while. It definitely gives similar vibes to Twins by Varian Johnson, which I absolutely love that. And I'm hoping that it's getting a sequel next year. But this was one that had been closely placed to that in terms of like vibes that it gives off. So I wanted to pick it up. I love the idea of focusing on a black girl in swimming. Had no idea the context of the story whatsoever. So I finally was able to check it out from the library and read it and fell in love with it. It focuses on a young girl who is moving to Florida with her father and she is excited to start a new middle school and to get into her classes and meet new people and when she goes to sign up for electives the only elective that they have left is swim 101 and she is absolutely petrified of the idea of swimming and getting in the water she does not know how to swim her dad has never taught her how to swim what was so phenomenal about this one i think is that there is this blending of fact and fiction where the author explores why you have black children that are less likely to be able to swim than their other counterparts and how it is closely related to what has happened in the past historically access to pools for the black community was not a thing that happened and and so the idea of us being able to swim and learning how to swim is not as common as people would think it is. I grew up in a family where we just, it was a thing. My mom loved to swim, my dad loved to swim. And so I was introduced to the water at a very early age as I will do with my own daughter. But I know that there are circumstances like in the story where we have a main character whose father also had some issues with swimming and with the water and fear of it and so that is kind of passed down generationally to his daughter. I also like the dynamics of like friendship building between generations so the generational friendships where we have a younger character that builds his bond with an older character that has experienced the impact of segregation and Jim Crow and trying to break those barriers and feel comfortable swimming and being comfortable with the water. And there's also some elements in there as well when it comes to friendship and teamwork. And so a lot of a lot of traditional themes that you would expect to see in middle grade, but that element of swimming and how it has a close relationship to the black community and to Jim Crow and segregation and racism is done beautifully. And I think it just worked very, very well. The only hiccup that I think I had with this one when I was reading it is that we don't really get much of, I don't wanna say closure, but we don't really see any pushback for the way the coach of another team acts, which is completely horrendous. And there didn't seem to be any kind of repercussions for the behavior. So that was the only thing that bothered me. I love the idea of them learning to swim together and learning different strokes and the competition element. It was just a really, really fun middle grade graphic novel. The next one that I have is Frizzy by Clarabelle Ortega. This is another one that's been making its rounds that a lot of people have been interested in or have read. And Rose Basamra is the individual that did the illustrations on this. So it is a story about Marlene who is a young Latin girl who has a very curly and thick hair texture and she is being taken by her mother to the salon every Sunday to get rid of those kinks and curls and to straighten her hair out. She is looked upon by other members of her family as not having good hair. And if you know anything about me, I'm always interested in the idea and concept of texturism and how there is a way to discriminate against someone based on the texture of the hair. And we see that play at the forefront here with Marlene. She is very insecure about the idea of having curly hair and frizzy hair and kinky hair and just hair that is not like you run a comb through it and it's silky and she doesn't like going to the salon she doesn't like getting her hair straightened but she 
does not have this space to be able to express that because her mother has also been conditioned not to enjoy and love her natural hair so once again we kind of see this generational concept and idea get passed on and passed on and passed on i love that there was such a support system for mylene i think that it's easy to kind of get caught up in a story where this character is going through so much so much so much and they're very isolated and they don't have a support system and i love that in the context of the story clarabelle made sure that our main character had a supportive family member who also had hair that was not up to the quote unquote standards of good hair and there's this whole process of learning how to care for your own hair and how everyone else cares for the hair may not work for you and that goes for any hair texture or style or whatever everyone is not universal but this idea of good hair what does it mean to have good hair and to see that this is a thing that just doesn't exist in terms of what you know white people may say to buy communities but it's also something that we do within our own communities and I I said this from being a part of the black community and battling texturism being black I went through a whole phase in my life where I felt like to be beautiful I had to have straight hair and then when I went natural even going natural there were still some ideas of texturism being ingrained into my head where I had to have a certain curl pattern in order for my hair to be pretty or to be good and if it wasn't that then my hair still wasn't valuable now transitioning to I have locks and it is what it is but Clarabelle never really misses for me and I'm so glad they took the time to do a graphic novel which was just the illustrations the color palettes all of this it was just done very very nicely the next one that I have on my list is one that I ended up reading last year and this was or maybe I read it earlier this year I read it earlier this year sorry y'all this is Isla to Island and it is by Alexis Castellanos and this is a middle grade graphic novel that timeline wise would take place during Operation Peter Pan where kids were being sent from Cuba to the United States to protect them. So we're following a main character. This has no words in it. It is an all visual graphic novel which I love because I always say that when you're reading graphic novels and comics and manga it is the art that is driving the story and the text is accompanying it and we get to see this forefront in this graphic novel where there is no text so the story is literally driving the story is literally being driven by the art completely and i love i love that so we follow our main character as she's leaving cuba and the artwork in this is the color palette alone the way the coloring was done was very fascinating so we start in cuba where everything is beautiful and bright and and colorful and this is when we are meeting our main character with her family and they're in cuba and they're enjoying their life and then things start going wrong in cuba and that's when she is sent to the united states and everything immediately turns grayscale and it's because of the difficulty that she had in adjusting to being in the states not speaking English not being familiar with the customs and and especially thinking about it in terms of schooling going to an American school for the first time and not being used to the, the standards and criteria that a US school would expect and not having the the language skills to be able to communicate with people in the way that she wanted to be able to communicate with people and eventually we see her work through all of this and make her way back to a level of comfort where everything is colorful again but it was just it was great it was unlike anything that i had read before and i'm glad that the author took the time to really talk about operation peter pan in the back and that although in this situation we had a main character who was sent to a family that was very receptive and tried in every way to make her feel comfortable try to figure out ways to communicate with her and try to make her feel like she was a part of their family that was not always the case and i'm glad that that's highlighted because sometimes people can take these series these stories and apply them as universal meaning that we think that this was the experience of everyone and that can be a quite dangerous narrative to take especially in a middle grade graphic novel where kids are reading stuff like this and we're you know using the windows mirrors and sliding glass door concept and they're learning 
about pieces of history and other people's experiences and understanding that even though this was a positive experience in some ways and not in all ways, this was a positive experience in some ways, but it is not a monolith and this was not everyone's experience. So I'm glad that that was included, but it, there was so much emotional complexity in this book with it just being art that I still think about this book from time to time. So I, I really recommend picking it up. The next one that I have is one that I also read earlier this year and thought was just phenomenal. And that is Borders by Thomas King. This one is a book and I'm going to start by saying with this recommendation, this is not a book that gives you the answers up front. And it follows a young boy and his mother and they are attempting to leave Canada to cross into the US because they have a family member, his sister, her daughter, who has moved to the US. And so they're attempting to visit her. When they go to the border, the first thing that the border patrol person asks is, are you Canadian or are you American? And she says, I'm Blackfoot. And so I was like, okay, I, I'm even as an adult reading this, I'm like, all right, what is going on here? So we continue to see this or oh, every time they go to the border, are you American or are you Canadian? And she says Blackfoot. And this keeps happening until finally it clicks in your head like, aha, I see what's happening here. You are asking someone to define themselves in context of borders that do not exist to them and should not exist. And I had to do some outright outside reading to understand a treaty that was established that allows them to move in between the two countries. And that these are borders that have been established by colonizers and have no, they have no implications for indigenous and native communities. And Thomas King does not hold your hand to walk you to that process. It is, I'm giving you the story and I want you to put the clues together and figure it out yourself because I'm not going to teach it to you. You've got to be able to use those critical thinking skills in order to get to the point of the story. And I've seen some critiques of this where like, oh, nothing happens. It's not about the action and the thrill. It is the simplicity of this that means the most because most readers are not going to understand the purpose of it within the first few pages. There is no context really you're like i'm confused as to why like okay why won't you just say you're american or canadian like what was the issue here and then you start to understand what the issue is and it's it's not one that i say like you go in for action and thrills but to understand the issue with the concept of borders that are drawn and impact people who have been here before <laughs> You have settlers come in and create boundaries and board and it's like, okay, but uh, we've been moving freely for years, for years and years and years. And you come and you establish a border and how am I supposed to respect a border that has never existed prior to you coming here? It, there's just so much to be said about how this graphic novel was framed and created. And I, I loved it so much. I think there's much to be said about how Thomas King controlled this narrative and how he presents it to readers. I think this is one of those middle grade graphic novels that are great for conversation after reading. What did we learn? What did we take away? What are some outside things that we need to view and, and look at and talk about in context of this story? It was chef's kiss, y'all. One, one of the best to do it, honestly. The next one that I have is allergic and I've talked about allergic a lot. And the reason why I've talked about allergic so much is because allergic is a middle grade graphic novel that I wish I had growing up. I was that kid that was allergic to everything. I'm still allergic to everything. People ask me all the time, oh my gosh, are you ever going to get your kid like a dog or a cat? And I'm like, absolutely not. I can't. I'm too allergic. And it was like that as a kid where I wanted to have that pet or animal like all the other kids in my class. And I literally couldn't because I was allergic. So we're following a main character who really, really wants a dog and come to find out she's extremely allergic to dogs. And it changes the way she's extremely allergic to animals. And she 
is heartbroken and devastated about it and it changes the dynamics of how she even interacts with her classmates and how she interacts with her neighbors and that she just can't engage with them the same way because she's severely allergic and so we see her and her family try to come up with different remedies and even things like having an allergy shot and knowing that that's not as instantaneous like I think sometimes there's this misconception that if you take an allergy shot that means that you're no longer allergic anymore and that's not reality that's not the case so I love that the author took the time to explore that this is one of those graphic novels that I think a lot of kids are going to appreciate in the long run because it's a topic that's not always talked about it's not always covered it's always looked at as like it's a small thing but for kids like being allergic to animals and growing up and wanting a pet that is huge especially when you see all of your friends and your classmates have pets or if you know there's a class pet and you can't engage with the class pet because you're severely allergic it really really sucks so once again artwork was stunning I love the vibrancy of the artwork in this one and the very emotional kind of panels where we see our character going through allergic reactions and the emotional and physical impact that it ends up having on her. Okay, so the next one that I have on my list is Shuri in Chichala Into the Heartlands, which is an original middle grade graphic novel story, graphic novel story that is written by Roseanne A. Brown. And this one was fascinating for me because Marvel and DC are both doing more in terms of introducing younger readers to very, very popular characters. And of course, that's important when we think about it in terms of these kids are seeing these Marvel movies be released. And it's not always accessible to provide them with the original source material. It's not always like kid friendly. So I love that they are creating more children's and middle grade stories that are accessible for kids now this one like i said is an all original this is not a new origin story or retelling or anything where we follow shuri and t'challa and shuri and t'challa have issues with getting along with each other and they create this big mess during soul washing day and they destroy a key component of soul washing day which ends up making all of the people of wakanda and even their mother sick and we get to see them try to figure out what exactly has happened and what went wrong and how they can fix the problem and also the issues that are part of their relationship. Understanding and realizing that there is a certain element of grief that T'Challa is dealing with that Shiri doesn't necessarily understand. And then T'Challa not always understanding how much Shiri needs him in terms of that sibling interaction and being a big brother. This was definitely more so I think about the sibling dynamics, which I think readers young and old will appreciate that, especially if you're a fan of Black Panther. If you seen any of the movies you know the relationship that T'Challa and Sherry have and how close they are as siblings and so seeing this as a younger version of them and seeing them having to navigate and figure out the relationship was really really fun. The artwork in this one was beautiful. The coloring was chef's kiss. Love the art. I have to give props to Rosanna A. Brown for writing this graphic novel because to my knowledge this is her first graphic novel and she did a very very good job of not over writing, not allowing the text to drive the story, following the artwork as she should. And so I'd love to see when writers, typically a prose, are able to make that transition and do such an excellent job with writing graphic novels. And she she shot, oh, she shined in this one. And I can't wait to see if she's going to do things in the future. The next thing that I have on my list, honestly, is more than just one recommendation. So I'm just going to go ahead and say like, read anything by Raina Tele Telgemeier. I always want to say Telgemeier, but it's actually Telgemeier. I love everything that Raina does. It's It never fails. I just recently finished Sisters for the first time, which is part, I believe it's called, I think it's the Sisters trilogy. It may be, it could be a completely different name, but it is Smile, Sisters, and Guts are the three that are in that trilogy. She also has Ghost and Drama, and then she's also done some work for the graphic novel adaptations of The Babysitter's Club. So anything that Raina does, I would recommend recommend highly recommend reading i think that if i gave you a place to start it would definitely be smile because smile explores so many different things and a, a lot of what she does in that trilogy is semi-autobiographical which is based off of her own experiences her experiences with her sister and her parents and her younger brother all of that is somewhat true to to nature which she 
does talk about in her author afterward but smile is such a good place to start because it deals with that dynamic with the family it also deals with the fact that she has an accident and she has to go through this whole entire orthodontic <laughs> this dentistry and orthodontic type of thing and it is rough on her but at the same time she's also going through puberty and transitioning from like middle school to high school it's fascinating such a fascinating book i read it for the second time this year it was a reread for me glad i read it and i like i said i read sisters for the first time and i'll be rereading guts for the second time sometime this year but anything by Raina telgemeier telgemeier see i want to say her name wrong again anything by Raina telgemeier is is gold kids love Raina like love Raina. So this next one is one that I read a long time ago and I absolutely adored it when I read it and I need to continue the rest of the series and it's Sunny Side Up by Jennifer L. Holm who's done a host of middle grade and children's graphic novel work but Sunny Side Up takes place during the 70s and we're following a main character who it's summertime but instead of like having what she considers to be like a real summer vacation she ends up getting shipped off to her grandparents in Florida and so she ends up enjoying her time but it's such a darker theme attached to this one because there's a reason why she's being sent and as you read the graphic novel you start to learn that in the months prior to her going on summer vacation she and her parents begin to watch her brother spiral out of control with substance abuse issues and so this one was an interesting one for me because I don't think I had read a middle grade graphic novel. I've read middle grade books that touch on substance abuse but not a middle grade graphic novel that touches on substance abuse and so openly talks about it and that it's not something that people should steer away from having a conversation about and the steps and protocols and procedures to do if you know someone that's close to you whether that's a friend or a family member just a loved one in general that may be suffering from substance abuse and I I, I ate this story up. It's been a while since I've read it, but I just remember the feeling that it left me and I really do need to continue with the rest of the series because I believe it's up to four or five books at this point. But Jennifer L. Holm did a very good job tackling the topic of substance abuse in a way that is acceptable and relatable or accessible not acceptable accessible and relatable for middle grade graphic novel readers the last one that i have on this list is one that was more emotional than i anticipated it being for me as an adult reader and that is the seance tea party by remina yi who has also recently i believe come out with a new middle grade graphic novel called my aunt is a monster that one just released a couple of months ago but meaning to read that one. Yi has a backlist of other graphic novels that I'm also interested in checking out, but Seance Tea Party is, it tackles the idea of growing up and leaving childhood behind. And as an adult, it made me think about like how much we want to grow up when we're kids we want to be adults and then you become an adult and you're like dang I wish I would have just slowed down and appreciated being a child a little bit more and not try to grow up so fast and we have a main character who's really struggling with that where her friends are moving a lot faster in terms of wanting to do more you know preteen and teenage things as opposed to doing what they were doing when they were younger elementary kids and she still wants to participate in those activities and you know just really hone in on that piece of her childhood and she doesn't want to let go of that and so she ends up meeting a ghost that is going to be her new friend because her old friends have seemingly just moved on and started doing their own thing and so she meets this ghost and they end up being friends and she takes this ghost to different places but there is a and I'm not going to spoil it for you there is a much more dark and heartbreaking story behind this ghost than what I was anticipating as an adult reader and it really makes our main character look at things from a different angle and it really tore me up to be honest with you. it tore me up this one is great for like cozy spooky vibes I love that it was a vibrant color palette that was chosen in terms of the artwork but almost like the colors were muted which gave it more fall vibes if that even makes sense but I just really really love this one y'all I was torn the f up over this one I really was it hurt my little feelings when I read this and I was like 
Oh goodness gracious, this is not what I thought I signed up for, but it was so great and I, I really did enjoy it. All right, y'all, so those are 10 middle grade graphic novel recommendations. If you have read any of these or if you would like to push any other recommendations or if you would like to see another video like this, let me know in the comment, downs, comment box down below. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you wanna see more content, click on the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. All my links to my social will be down in the description box below and I will be back with another video soon.